Yo yo what's good YouTube this is Angry to you and today I'm gonna be showing you guys just how to make this home video background section and also this call to action button okay so when we hover over it it's gonna give us this call to action button it's gonna take us to the membership page and then the home page again we have the contact button it's gonna take us to the contact page this is gonna scroll us down to the about section and this is gonna also take us to the membership okay so in case you're on mobile and this hover effect does not show we're gonna also have this call to action which does not look bad at all actually i think it looks pretty good so let's get to it okay so first off we're going to be getting the video dynamically and also the title for this okay so we already have this before from the video background component we created we're just going to create a new component call it cta so just go into your gym front end okay and then components create a new folder call it cta i already have that so i'm not going to create it all over again and inside it just create a new file call it cta.jsx okay so again i already have that so it's not going to be created and let me just remove everything over here and do rfce Okay, afterwards just go into your here it is so this is what is supposed to be showing up for you guys and afterwards we're just going to go into our index.js and we're going to export it as well so we can import it later on in our sections okay i'm going to go into just my video background and remove everything as well and do rfce here it is so just make sure to go into your sections and inside your sections also create a new index.js export them default if you want to so you could uh, import them later on as well easily so uh, in the section we're just going to add in the video background and the call to action components that's why uh, i mentioned them in the index.js before okay so in the call to action let's start by actually let's start by the video background and then we're going to go to the call to action okay so i have the demo i'm just going to keep the demo to the side over here and uh, it is let me just close the folder and the video background over here okay so i just have this demo to just make the time shorter for you guys okay so first off we're just going to import these two which is going to be the mdb container and ndb ripple from the mdb react ui kit afterwards we're going to import two react hooks which is going to be use effect and use state which we're going to be using to basically <coughs> hold the state variables for our back end and then using the use effect to display our uh, video background link okay so again we have a video background over here and one last thing we're just going to be importing we're going to also import the css which is video bg dot superstar sheet and here it is just make sure you have this file in the same folder let me close that up again and afterwards we're just going to import the client that we mentioned from two videos ago when we we're just connecting the back end to the front end okay and that is all the imports we need okay afterwards we're just gonna assign the state variable and the use state hook so that's gonna be video background and set video background that is gonna also take the use state but we're not going to use the null we're going to use an empty array like i did before so here it is okay so that is basically what we're going to be assigning the value we're going to be getting from the back end to this variable but in order for us to actually do that we need to actually get the information from the client so to do that we're going to be using use effect and an arrow function and inside there if you do check out also the example over here 
we're just going to be assigning in a const query and then this is the syntax by the way for the sanity j uh, r o k uh, r o q queries so it is like this this is just an example type is equal to home and by the way if you don't know where we're getting this from i'm going to show you it is actually very simple so if we go back into our folder structure the back end and then the schemas and we want the query for the home okay so let's think about it i already added previously the schema for the home that already has a field for the home video but we want two other ones which is going to take the description and the title so let's copy and paste this two more times but let me change this to title and change this to jumbotron title for example type is going to be a string and the same thing for the description so name is going to be description and the title is going to be description and that is going to be a string as well okay so if we do control f and we just go into localhost 3033 which where we are hosting our back end as you can see right now in our home section in this untitled one which is basically just the uh, one we want uh, we're gonna have a jumbo trend title and a description okay we just need one for our video that is going to be over here okay but just make sure to not add more than one because uh, if you do add more than one it's going to map over that and it's going to show all of these videos so just make sure it's just one okay so uh, uh, uh. go to video background back again and this is where you get the query from this is the type as you can see this is the key id and it's the type of document so we're just getting in the query of the type of home afterwards we're just going to be using the client that we imported and we're going to use the fetch method okay and we're going to basically fetch the query afterwards we're just going to do something so we don't forget this is called an empty dependency array okay so i'm just going to add a comment over here dependency array to avoid infinite loop error okay so basically if you do not add this empty dependency array you're going to get an error and it's basically going to loop over your application like a lot of times and let me show you just an example okay so afterwards we're just going to map in dot then we're going to map in the data okay and we're going to set the video background to the data and that is basically for the video background itself okay so uh, let's start actually creating the gui so the gui itself is not going to be that hard but again i'm just going to keep this to the side so we're going to start by mdb container that we imported before and we're going to give it the class of fluid, the property of fluid, I'm sorry. Class name. Let me just check what class names I have over here. Okay, so I just have a shadow 5 strong, a background of info, and a padding y of 2. So it's just going to give me this blue background over here that we had on the video before. Okay, we're also going to add in the MDB ripple okay and in the mdb ripple is basically just gonna give me this effect when i click on it like it's rippling like it's kind of watery so i'm just gonna get in again the class names from here so again i don't waste your time so i just give it a width of 100 and let me tell you why because we're gonna be adding a video so we just want that video to have a width of 100 if i don't add it over here it's gonna make the video just 
stuck in this area and I'm gonna show you that just in a few seconds okay so afterwards we're gonna be starting mapping over the video background over here okay so let me just add a comment over here and mapping over the video BG okay so let's do that so that is going to be video BG this is the state variable we mentioned over here and then the dot map method okay inside there we're gonna basically map over two things this is the basic syntax so we're just gonna assign a uh, a like a small let me show you actually the syntax and you'll get a better understanding so dot app method js and over here you could add in like an empty fragment for now we're going to remove that but this is how you map over items so if you go over here the prototype that I map it just takes two uh, parameters as you can see it has the element and the index and also an array so this is just the simple syntax so i do have just the element over here and the index okay uh, afterwards i'm just gonna assign a div okay and close that div i'm gonna give it the class name just of width 100 just to make sure everything is at responsive width I'm going to give it also the key of the index, okay, to give it also video plus index to make it unique, and we're going to add in the video tag, and inside that video tag, we're going to have a source tag like I just did over here, that's the closing tag, okay, so video, and then source the source is going to be i'm going to show you where we're going to get the source from and the type is going to be uh just add in the type of the video itself so you, you have like a lot of types you could add video mp4 but i'm going to add in video webm okay because that is the format for my video and the source over here is basically the video element over here and then if we go into our back end like I said we mentioned before the ID this is the key ID so let me just copy and paste this three more times these are the IDs for the dynamic objects we're gonna be getting from the back end so let me just copy this name this is gonna be source video dot home video here it is so as you can see right now we have the video from the back end but we don't have the styling so for the styling we're just gonna add in these styles over here that I just added before I'm not gonna talk about GUI that much but these are just some media queries like simple media queries like you could also add in uh, like actual media screen queries but this is just some simple min and max queries so we could make this uh, at a maximum and a minimum height at like small screens and big screens okay so i'm just gonna give this class name to my video and also i'm gonna give it these properties that i have and i'm just gonna explain it to you guys really quickly okay so first off i have plays inline which is basically just a property that makes the video play in line controls uh it's false because i don't want the controls of the video to be shown autoplay is going to be true loop is going to be true because we want the video to loop over and just keep playing one last thing we're going to be adding is going to be loading equals to lazy which is going to lazy load our videos so that is going to make the video so much better in terms of the like the loading time for the screen okay so this is how you do the video and in terms of the mask 
Okay, I'm just gonna copy and paste this from the old one. Okay, I'm not gonna waste your time anymore. And let me just close this up. Okay, so that is gonna bring us the static uh, cover effect. And by the way, this is done by this mask. So just make sure to assign this mask. And afterwards, add in this deflex, which displays flex, displays everything flex. And then we're justifying the content center, aligning the item center, giving a height of 100 a text weight and we're gonna get the content dynamically over here okay so this is also gonna take the video one but this is gonna be video dot title and this is gonna be video dot description okay the thing is right now if we do add anything to it right now it's going to be empty why because we do not have anything over here so let me add in a title so gyms gym and new offers 2022 and then we're going to publish that okay Okay, that's going to take a moment or two. And let me just check out the names that I have over here. So I have the name of title. So video.title. And also video.description. Okay. Here it is. So as you can see right now, we're getting the title dynamically. So let's say we want to change this to new offers 2023. We could just go over here and like let's say gyms gym is open just to show that the title is also updatable and we can also update the video if you want to okay so just give it a few more moments and it is going to update itself so while uh this is updating on its own okay it's just going to take a minute or two to actually show the content dynamically. Let me close everything up and let me work on the call to action section, okay? So again, I don't want to waste your time a lot. So we're just going to have this call to action. And I'm just going to import the demo also that I have before. So again, I do not make this very long. I'm just going to keep the demo on the side over here. I'm just going to get the imports from here. <clears throat> and that is just going to be the MDB button, MDB button group, MDB container, and the MDB ripple and MDB row and column system. So let me just import them correctly. Import. Here they are. And in terms of the mouse, like animated icon you saw at the beginning of the demo, I just do have a link for it over here. I just have it mentioned on my uh, Cloudinary. This is just a uh, a cloud delivery network, so you could add in your images over here. Because I'm not gonna change this, I'm not gonna make this section dynamic. I'm not going to change this. I just want to show you this savage that I have over here. Here it is. So this is just a animated icon. And if you want this icon, if you want to create your free icons, you could just get it from this. It's called Loaf. So Loaf Savage Icons. You could create your own. Just search mouse. Choose one of the free ones. And just create whatever color you want and the sizes and everything. Also the duration, you could do it like very slow, whatever you want, okay? So here it is. I'm going to also add in the link in the description. Okay, so let me just add in that. So I just assigned a const with the mouse savage icon over here. So don't worry, I'm going to be explaining, like I said, everything. Uh, uh, okay. 
So let me just go back to the demo over here and see what I started with. Okay, so I do have the MDB container. So actually, let me show you something. Okay, so again, we're going to do the same thing we did before, which is basically start our return state mode and MDB container. Give it the fluid property. Afterwards, we're going to do MDB button group. MDB button group. And afterwards, we're going to add in the MDB ripple because we want our buttons to also have this ripple effect like you see over here. So MDB ripple. Okay, and we could give it the properties that like on the right I have over here ripple color and ripple tag also so it just knows which ripple tag it's going to so that's going to be a div and ripple color we don't want it to be danger we could make it not actually make it info okay and inside that mdb ripple we're going to be adding in an mdb row which is going to take in the grid system so MDB row, and we're going to have four, uh, actually three columns that are going to have the size of four. Okay, so the grid system has the maximum size of one column of the maximum of 12. So we could divide that by three. Okay, so that is what I'm going to be doing. I'm going to copy and paste it two more times. And let me show you just what I mean. So test, test and another test here it is but we just need to add in some class names for everything over here okay so i'm just going to get the class names that i read before again just to save up time but it is really easily if you want to change that on your own so you could just start by the container give it a class name of background dark text center which is going to center everything up padding y of 2 which is going to give it some padding down here as you can see right now and one else okay so in the button group i'm also going to give it a background of dark so class name that is going to be bg dark with uh, 100 rounded five which is basically the maximum of rounded uh, that you could get for mdb like syntax and we're going to give it a shadow strong of five one last thing we need to add in the mdb ripple we just need to give it the class name of width of 100 so it's starting to look really good i'm just going to give it the class name of width of 100 okay so here it is and right now we're going to be starting adding in the buttons okay so inside each one we're just going to have an mdb button okay and close that first one is going to be contact and you could add in icons if you want to as well so uh, let me just copy and paste this two more times. Okay. So as you can see right now, we're just going to be changing in the href first of all. So just go into your MDB button. Give it the href. Actually, let me just close this. Let me just get this class name. And actually, we don't need anything else from this demo let me close this okay so i just gave it a margin x of two so it's gonna drop a little bit like you can see over here and a width of 75 because i don't want it to have a, a full width you can if you want to but i want it to be like this i don't want it to be like small buttons like this so i'm just gonna give it the width of 75 I'm going to give it the color of success. 
okay and I'm gonna give it the href of uh, this is gonna be contact okay because we want it to take to the contact page and we're also gonna give it outline which is gonna make the button in an outline like this uh, uh, uh. okay what else okay so let's continue with the other buttons so in the second button we're gonna have just the image and the source of the image is going to be the const we assigned before this is going to be just a static image again you could do do it dynamically like we did in the home page if you want to but that is going to add in like so much code that we don't want to so here it is and i'm just going to add in the uh, properties that i have over here i just have a simple width of 25 pixel and height of 25 pixels so that is going to be the same on all screens okay uh, also I'm gonna give it the like in the demo over here the same colors and everything so the only difference is I'm giving the href of about because we wanted to take us to the section okay so when we click on we want to take us to the about and the last button i'm just going to copy and paste this from my old demo uh over here and i'm going to just add it into my last column over here okay i'm going to remove this and we're done okay let me just view common palette and format the document all right, so one last thing. Let's actually change the contact section to a color of info. And also let's give it rounded, okay? Make sure to add rounded also as well if you want your button to look rounded like this. So I'm just gonna change the color and add rounded. Uh, just compile that and we're done. So it looks pretty aesthetic to me, honestly. And on our home page, this is what you're gonna see. All right, so see you guys in the next video where I'm gonna be doing the about section. This was Angry to you and peace.